going on guys welcome back to the channel hope everyone's doing super well uh, I've been MIA for a little bit because I am recovering from knee surgery but I'm starting to feel pretty good and wanted to get back to posting some content on the channel so uh, today we are going to be going over programmatic auto layout or constructing views or storyboards programmatically a lot of you guys have requested this content and uh, today we're going to be going over um, how to get started with doing that and uh, why it's better to construct your views programmatically as opposed to using storyboards. We're gonna go over some of the advantages and disadvantages, and then we are going to go over uh, how to create this pretty cool user profile header programmatically with the, uh, the techniques that we learn in this video. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Before we get started, quick advertisement, guys. This is an Instagram clone that I have built and published a course on Udemy on um, how to clone Instagram and it's super cool. There's a ton of awesome features. It's almost 30 hours of footage. Um, you have notifications, in-app messaging, and uh, you learn how to do a ton of cool stuff. We engineer the back end from scratch, build all the front end from scratch. And uh, it's a really great course and I think it's like $10 on Udemy. So it's a steal of a deal. Make sure you check that out. And uh, I have some other courses as well. I will post the links to the uh, in the description to this video. So please check that out and let's go ahead and get started with this video now. All right guys, so before we get started, let's go ahead and go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of using uh, storyboards versus programmatic auto layout or constructing your views programmatically. So here's this article by a guy named Henry Chan. Um, and he says there's been a heated debate in the Swift community regarding the use of storyboard and programmatic when it comes to creating your interface and he's not wrong. So really quick, let's go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. So if you guys have used storyboards before, you know they're very easy to use. It's drag and drop, a kid could do it. It's uh, very easy to adjust things. There's a bit of a learning curve with uh, adding constraints and stuff, but once you get that figured out, they're super simple, right? They're also very visual. So this is another big advantage. It's really nice to be able to see a visual representation of your app in the storyboard file. Uh, that's something you don't get with programmatic auto layout or programmatic constraints. You have to run your application to see what it's going to look like. Um, so that's a, an advantage of storyboards. Uh, so let's go over some of the advantages of programmatic stuff. Uh, you have a lot more control over what you're doing. Um, anything that is achievable through storyboard, you can do the same through code, right? And we're going to see later that you can do a lot more programmatically than you can do with storyboards. You have a lot of limited functionality when you're using storyboards because with um, programmatic stuff, you can introduce logic into, into your, your UI, right? So if you imagine like a messaging interface where you have messages from one user on the left and your messages on the right, it's very difficult to do that using a storyboard. You know, you have to do that programmatically because you have to introduce logic. You have to say, if the message is from someone, put it on the left. If it's not, put it on the right. You can't do that with a storyboard. It has to be done in code. Um, you also have a ton of reusability. So if you create a custom view, you can use it anywhere throughout your app, right? Uh, by simply copy and pasting the code or subclassing it. Uh, another one is clutter and navigation. When This is a huge disadvantage of storyboards. Um, not as big as the one I just mentioned though, with like not having logic being able to implement in your UI. One of the main reasons I dislike using storyboards is when it becomes cluttered. Uh, in storyboards initial phase, this isn't a problem, but once it's filled with UI elements and controllers, it's very difficult to navigate. Um, I've seen this firsthand. I've worked with an application that I built myself that was very complex that was super annoying to work with storyboards because of how big it got. And then uh, merge conflicts as well. So um, when you're working with other developers, if one guy's doing it programmatically, one guy's doing it with storyboards, you're going to have merge conflicts when you try to combine your code, and they're very difficult to solve. Um, but really the biggest one is the first one I mentioned, guys. If you want to build more complex UI, uh, it's going to be, it's, you simply can't do certain things with storyboards. So um, if anything, you should understand and know how to do things programmatically. Even if you want to keep using storyboards, that's fine. But this is something that if you want to take your Swift development to the next level, you need to understand how to build out your user interface programmatically. Um, you're also going to see this a lot more in the professional world. At my job, almost all of our user interface is built programmatically. We do not like using storyboards. So let's go ahead, now that we've talked about that, and get started with our application. All right, guys, so let's go ahead, get started with Xcode, and uh, start with a single view app. I'm gonna call this Auto Layout Tutorial. Let's create a new app. 
create it. And let's talk about what we're going to be doing to get started. Okay. So, um, we are going to be writing out a function that's going to help us pin these subviews to our main view and add those constraints. So like if you go to a storyboard, I hate these things, man. Okay. And like when we add something like a label, we have to be able to add constraints to that label, right? Like if we want to center it there. So we're going to be writing out a function to help us do that, uh, to add those constraints programmatically. And then we're going to go over how to create the views programmatically. Then we're going to be adding them um, to the screen using the function that we create. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So go to your view controller file and we're going to create an extension for UI view. And I'll explain why we do that in a second. Um, we're going to create this function called anchor. And it's going to look like this. We're going to say we, we need to be able to, uh, through this function, give our views uh, constraints, right? So sometimes like we need to be able to anchor it to the, either the top, the left, the right, or the bottom of the screen. So we need to add all those input parameters. So this is going to be an NS layout Y axis anchor. And make it like, do that. And I'll explain why we do that. Left is going to be an NS layout X axis, X axis anchor. And then we're going to say bottom NS layout Y axis anchor that equals nil. And then right NS layout X axis anchor. And that also equals nil. Okay, guys, so why are we making these optional and giving them a default value of nil? Right. So um, when we call this function, we don't always need to pass in all of these layout parameters. You're most likely most of the time you're only going to need two, sometimes three. Right. So in this case, for this big like view, this blue view that we have here, we need three. We need to anchor it to the top, the left and the right. We don't need the bottom guy. So it doesn't make sense to have that parameter in there. So we only uh, add it if we need it. Now what we need are some padding, right? So if we want to, so like for this guy here, it's anchored to the top and the left. And then it has uh, this padding here, this spacing. So we need to add those spacing parameters into this function as well. So we're going to say padding top, which is a CG float. And we're going to give that a default value of zero. And then we're going to say padding left, CG float equals zero. Adding bottom CG float equals zero and padding right CG float equals zero. And again, we are giving these default values of zero because we don't, we only want to give it padding if we need to. So like with this guy here, this big blue view that we have, again, this is just a UI view that we created and gave it a background color. Um, it doesn't have any padding. It's just pinned to the left, the right, and the top. So we don't need these padding left and stuff, and padding top, padding left, padding right. We don't need to call that. So when they're not there, it's just going to give it a default value of zero. That's what this question mark equals uh, does. And then last thing we need is width, which is a CG float. And uh, this is one is a little different. We need to say equals nil and height CG float. With uh, the width and height, we set them equal to nil because with things like labels, the width and height are in, or figured out intrinsically by Xcode itself. Um, if you were to give those a width and height of zero, they just wouldn't show up. So you need to set the width and height equal to nil for certain things. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get started with writing out this function, right? So um, first thing we need to do is say translates auto resizing mask and constraints equals false, right? So this is how you activate programmatic constraints. If you don't call this, your programmatic constraints will not work. So now we need to do a couple things. We're going to say if let top equals top. And we're going to say if let padding top equals padding top. Then top anchor dot constraint. And select this option down here. Is equal to top constants padding top. And then you need to say dot is active equals true. 
If you forget this, it also will not work. All right, let's go over what we did here really quickly. So in this if let statement, we're checking to see if the top anchor exists. So if we passed in that top anchor, it's gonna get stored in this guy here. That's what the if let statement does, right? And then we need to check for the padding top. So um, if we have a top spacing that we wanna give it, we check for it. And what's cool about this, because it has a default value, if we don't give it that padding top, if we, if we don't give it any top spacing, it's just gonna default it to zero. So this will always have a value, right? But we need to unwrap it safely because it is optional. Um, so actually, let me see. I think we could just, no, just leave it. That's good. Um, hold on. Let me see if this works really quick. So just cut that out guys. And I think we can just give this a bang just like that because we can force unwrap it because we always know it's going to have a default value. So that's fine. All right now let's just copy and paste this guy. We need to do the same thing for the left, bottom, and right. So now we just need to change some things around, right? So we need to say if let uh, left equals left, left anchor dot constraint is equal to left. And that's gotta be padding left. Okay. And then we need to do the right side, or sorry, let's do bottom first, bottom. And let's just copy bottom, boom, bottom, anchor, dot constraint is equal to bottom. And this is a little different. Um, we actually have to make this guy negative. So we need to say negative padding bottom. Because um, if we anchor something to the bottom of the screen and we want to move it up, um, it's different, uh, the y, the coordinate system uh, origin is up here. So a positive y, y value is downward, right? And a positive x value is to the right. If you wanna move something up, it has to be a negative value. So this guy is a little different because it's negative. I think we do have to unwrap that guy. So uh, it's just gonna look like this. I'm gonna copy and paste it from my completed application really quick to save some time. So let's go ahead and build our project. And that's looking good. So let's copy and paste this and do that for the right side as well. So for some reason, guys, it doesn't let us force unwrap it uh, when it's a negative value. So um, we have to unwrap it through an if let statement. I don't know why, just how it works. So we're gonna say uh, right. And then we gotta say equal to right, negative padding right. Okay, self dot uh, right anchor dot constraint. And just delete those selfs, we don't need that. All right, and now we need to do uh, the same thing for width and height. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that to save some time. It's pretty much the same process, guys. And then I'm going to explain exactly what's going on in this uh, function here. So we got to do this too. Gotcha. Let's give it command B, build that and see if it works. Okay. So that's a huge function, right? It's a lot of work to create that, but I use this function in every single one of my projects and I just copy and paste it from this project over to the next. And then I have, um, I have access to it to be able to add constraints to my views um, in every project. So you just have to write it out one time, which is really nice. So again, let's go over everything really quickly before we get started. So um, we have all these input parameters and they are the uh, corresponding Y or X axis, X axis anchors um, that we need to be able to pin our views to, right? So the top and the bottom are y-axis anchors because they're on the y-axis and the left and right are x-axis anchors because they're on the x-axis or horizontal axis of the screen, right? And then um, we have all these padding values. We give them a default value of zero <clears throat> because um, we only want to give it padding uh, if we want that spacing. So like this blue view doesn't have padding, but this email button does, right? 
and we give that padding. But uh, if we don't want any padding, it just defaults to zero. And these default to nil because we don't always need them, right? So like I said, in a lot of cases, you only need two or three anchors. It's rare you need all four. Okay, so, uh, and we went over why we do these as negative. It's because of how the coordinate system works on the screen. And then here we set up our height and width, right? So now, um, you guys, let's go ahead and get started with actually constructing our views programmatically. And then we're gonna call this function to be able to uh, pin them to our screen. Okay guys, so let's hop up to the top of our class here. And I'm gonna create a mark here. And this section is gonna be for properties and this one is gonna be for the life cycle. So if you guys haven't seen this before, what this does is it helps us like find things in our code a lot easier. So this is where we're gonna be creating all the code for our UI elements. So this is basically taking the place of what we would be doing by adding elements to our screen from the storyboard. So this is what that looks like. Let's go ahead and start by creating this profile image view. So we're gonna say let, and then we're going to name it our uh, UI element. So let's call this profile image view. And then we have to cast it. So it's gonna be of type UI image view. And then this is where it gets a little weird. We have to say equals, do uh, an open and close bracket. And then, oops, do open and close parentheses at the end of that. So this is gonna be kind of like a computed property. Now, um, we could do this by just going, let, uh, let's say image view equal UI image view. And that creates the image view for us. It's like this, this, these two parentheses give us that constructor, which means basically create that thing. Um, but we want to be able to give this image view some properties. And we're going to be doing that inside of this closure here. Instead of having to do it like inside of our view did load or writing a function to do that, we can just do it inside the declaration of this uh, profile image view constant that we've created. So what we need to do is create an image view and return that image view. So we have this IV which equals a UI image view. We return that UI image view. And this all matches up because we're returning um, the type of UI element within this closure that we have declared this to be. I know this might be a little confusing, but it's all gonna start to make sense as we keep going throughout the video. So just bear with me guys. So now what we can do is say IV dot background color equals dot red, right? So this is gonna give our image view a red background color. And I'm just doing this so we can see it showing up on our screen. So uh, now what we need to do, now that we've created this image view, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add it to our screen now. So it's pretty simple to do. We're gonna say view.add subview. And then we're gonna add that profile image view that we just created up there. And now we're gonna call this anchor function to uh, pin it to our screen. So if I were to run this application right now, excuse me, we're gonna notice that nothing's gonna come up on our screen, right? It's just this weird color. Uh, actually guys, let's go ahead and make our view background color white. So this sets the uh, screen color to white. We need to make sure we do that. So we, we noticed that we added the sub view our, of our profile image view, but it's not showing up. And that's because we need to give it some constraints. So we're gonna do that by calling this function. So we're gonna say profile image view dot anchor and you can go ahead and select this guy here and it's gonna get, um, autofill all of these input parameters here, but we don't need all of them. And we're gonna delete the ones that we don't need. For now, uh, to see this working, we're just gonna put it like up in the upper left corner of the screen. So we need to anchor it to the top of the view and the left of the view. That's where we're gonna be pinning it. And then we need to give it a width and a height and some spacing on the top and the left, okay? So for the top anchor, we just said view.topanchor hit tab for the left anchor, we say view.leftanchor. And right now, this is anchored to the top and the left of the view, it's that simple. We don't need the bottom and the right, so we can delete those guys. Padding top, let's say 44. Padding left, we can say like 32. We don't need these two guys. And for the width and height, we can make it 120 by 120. Now, if we run our code, we're gonna see that profile image view showing up on our on our screen, and there it is right there. It's in the upper left, anchored to the top and the left, and it has a padding of 44 on the top and 32 on the left. So guys, when you're adding these constraints, 
you need to make sure that you have a width and a height and at least one X layout, uh, X axis anchor and at least one Y axis anchor. And that's exactly what we have here. Width, height, X axis anchor is the left side and the Y axis anchor is the top. Uh, it's the same thing with storyboard. If you don't do those things in storyboard, um, everything gets really messy. So that's our profile image view. Now what we want to do is uh, go ahead and create that nice uh, blue background that we had there. And we're going to be doing that by creating a UI view programmatically. And then what we're going to do is add all the UI elements to that UI view. That's going to be our profile header. So let's go ahead and get started with that now. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get started with cre creating this like container view is what we're going to call it. So we're going to say let container view. And this is going to be of type UI view. And then we just follow that same pattern equals open close bracket. And we can say let view equal UI view, return view, and then add our constructor there. So that's the standard process for creating a UI element programmatically. Um, if you want to have this closure where you're going to give it some attributes. So let's go ahead and do pretty much the same thing we did and just say, let's say view.background color equals dot blue. And then let's go ahead and add this to our view. We want to pin it to the top, the left, and the right with zero padding, and then uh, give it a height. So let's go ahead and we can just comment this code out for now. And then we're going to say view.add subview container view, just like we did before, container view.anchor. And let's say view.top anchor, view.left anchor. The bottom, we can just delete. And then we're going to say you got a right anchor there. Padding top. We don't need any padding. So we can delete all of the padding guys. And again, um, just to go back to this function really quick, if we don't put a padding top in there, it just defaults to zero, which is what we want. We want to pin it to the top left and right. So we don't want any padding. So if it's not there, it's just going to go to that default value of zero, which is pretty cool. We don't have to actually say zero there. Um, and the same thing with like the bottom anchor, we don't need it. So we just don't have to put it in there and it's going to default to nil, which is pretty cool. So now, uh, something else that's pretty dope is that we don't need a width because we've anchored it to the left and the right. So it's pinned to the left and to the right. So it automatically figures out the width for us, which is pretty cool. So we can actually delete the width as well. And let's just give it a height of 300 and let's, uh, enter here clean it up a little bit and now we can go ahead and run our code and we're going to see that background view coming up and then we're going to get started with creating the rest of our ui elements and adding it to this container view here but uh before we do that uh we want to get that custom blue color so what we're going to do is uh create an extension for ui color here so we're going to say extension ui color and I'm going to go ahead, guys, and just copy and paste something in here really quick and explain it just to save some time. Uh, one second. Okay. All right. So we have these two functions, right? Um, and I'm going to explain them right now. So this one gives us back a color with the associated red, green, and blue values. So if you go to your storyboard really quickly, and you go and try to choose a color for this, uh, you notice that when you hit custom on the background color, you can get this red, green, blue option up at the top where it gives you these numerical values for the red, green, blue shading um, of the color that you want. So all we, we do is we write a function that, in, that takes in these red, green, blue values and uh, gives us back the associated color for it. So that's what this function is doing here. And this is how you create custom colors for your, uh, your views or UI elements. So um, something that's pretty annoying is you have to divide everything by 255 when you call the standard function that Apple gives you. Um, so here we create our own function where we just do that in this function so that every time we call it like we do here to create this main blue color, we can just pass in the, uh, the raw value of the uh, red, green, and blue. We don't have to type out divided by 255 every time. And what's cool about this is that reusability element that we uh, went over before. Um, any, anytime we want to access that custom blue color, all we have to do is say UI color dot main blue, 
as we're going to do in a second. And it's going to give us back this custom color that we create through use of this function that we create. So I also use this in every single one of my, the projects that I have where uh, I use this function to, to get me back custom colors and I just create the colors here. Uh, don't really worry about why it's static. That's not really important, but you do have to make these uh, constants static as well as this function static. So now we can just go up here and say dot main blue, and it's going to give us that custom blue background color. So if I run this really quickly, we're going to see that right now. Build succeeded, looking good. And it gives us that nice custom blue background color that um, we have in our completed application. So now what we're going to do, guys, is start adding our uh, UI elements to this container view here. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, guys, so now what we're going to do is uh, add this profile image view to this container view really quickly. So let's go ahead and uncomment this code. And let's go ahead and just cut this out. And command X to do that and paste it in here. So this is going to add our profile image view to this view, right? If we click on this view, it references this view, not the actual super view, um, which would be the entire screen, right? So that's pretty important to understand. Um, and we notice that we get an error here. Uh, and that's because this is a constant right now. And if you guys are familiar with the difference between constants and variables, you can't mutate constants. And what we're trying to do is mutate this view by adding something to it, appending something to it. So we need to create declare this as a variable. So we try and build it now, it's still gonna fail, and that's because it needs to be declared as a lazy variable. So um, don't really worry about that right now, but whenever you are creating um, a view that you're going to be adding other views to, you just declare it as a lazy variable. Basically what this lazy uh, declaration does is it doesn't render this view until it's uh, actually called by this view did load method. So it doesn't try to render it um, upon uh, until it gets called upon to be rendered, if that makes sense. It's kind of confusing. Don't really worry about that. It's kind of a technicality. Anyway, let's keep going. So now we're going to grab this and just put it here. Profile image view dot anchor. Let's, uh, let's enter here, clean it up a little bit. OK, so we want to center this guy now. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to say profile image view dot center x anchor dot constraint is equal to view dot center x anchor. And then you have to say dot is active equals true. So uh, what this does is it centers the profile image view on the x axis. So we don't need this left anchor anymore. Uh, let's see. We do need the top. We don't need the padding left anymore. And let's go ahead and make this 88 for the padding top. And now if we run this, we're going to notice that uh, our profile image view will now be a part of our container view, which is pretty cool. So there it is. Now let's actually get it to uh, have the correct image and stuff. So guys, make sure you go ahead and download the completed source code. It'll have these assets there which is what you need to get the buttons and the, uh, the Venom profile image view, which we're going to add to our image view right now. So now we can go ahead and delete this line of code because we don't need it. We don't want our image view background color to be red. Now we're just going to say IV.image, and then you can just go ahead and start typing out image literal. This is going to come up here, hit enter, double click on that little box that comes up, and then uh, we're, it's going to autofill to the first image there. And that's all we got to do to set the image. And we're going to say image view dot content mode equals dot scale aspect fill and IV dot uh, clips to bounds equals true. So these are all like checkboxes or drop down menus in the storyboard. Um, but we also have access to those attributes through the code here. And this is again why we create a closure for this image view so we can uh, configure it with these attributes and the image that we want to set it with here. And uh, we want to give it this uh, that nice white border too. So we're going to say IV dot layer dot border width or sorry border yeah, border width equals three. IV dot layer dot border color, and this has to be a CG color. UI color dot white, and then just say dot CG color there. That's how you have to declare the uh, color of a layer. 
and that should be good to go. Now let's see what this is looking like. Dun, da, da, da. Okay, now we just need to round it out. So what we're gonna do is go here and we need to give it a corner radius, right? Um, you can't do that in storyboard. You actually have to do that in code no matter what, unless they've updated that somehow. So we're gonna say profile image view dot layer dot corner radius. And then we just wanna divide the width whatever its width and height is by two. So we're gonna say 120 by two. And that gives it a circular shape. Run that. And then we're gonna really quickly create the rest of our UI stuff, add it, and then we're gonna call this video. So that's looking super good there, guys. Uh, really quick, let's make the status bar light. So just go down here and say preferred status bar style. Open and close and then return dot light content. So that's gonna make the status bar up here white, which is makes it look better on this blue background. Now we wanna add our button. So we're gonna do what we did basically with that image view at first, we're gonna pin the button, the email button or the message button to the top and the left and then the follow button to the top and the right. So first we need to create them, then we need to add them to our container view, then we need to give, the, the, give them the constraints. So. Let's go ahead and say, let uh, message button, which is UI button, equal, oops, let button equal UI button. And we have to pass in a type for this guy. So it's gonna be dot system return button. So this is like the default button that you get in storyboard. It's a system button. And then uh, we're gonna go here and we're gonna say button dot uh, set image and then do the same thing with our image literal guy. Give it that email. And then go to the right of this and say dot with rendering mode dot always original. So if we didn't do this, this would come back with the standard blue button tint. When we give it the rendering mode of always original, it just gives us back the original form of the button. And then say dot normal. And then this is where uh, code is pretty easy to reuse and like manipulate sort of. So we want to create another button for our follow guy. So we just have to copy and paste that, create, change the name of it. Everything else is going to be the same except this image. And that's all we have to do to create our follow button, which is pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and add it to our container view. So we're going to say view that add sub view message button. And then let's go down here and say view that add sub view, uh, email button or sorry follow button and now let's anchor our message button so we're going to say message button dot anchor and we can go ahead and type these out manually too if we want we know it just needs a top a left and a width and a height so let's go ahead and say top which is going to be view dot top anchor left which is view dot left anchor and then we're going to say uh, padding top and we're gonna give it 44 on the top and then padding left is 32. Then we're gonna give it a width of, uh, let's say 32 and then a height of 32 as well. And that's all we gotta do there. And then what's pretty cool is we can just copy and paste this anchor function as well uh, and just change it up for our follow button because it's almost exactly the same. We just need to change the left anchor and the padding left to be on the right side. So just go here here and say right and then say view dot right anchor and then here say padding right. And that's going to be all we need to do to create our buttons guys. So once you get going with this stuff, it's kind of it kind of steamrolls. It kind of has a snowball effect and it just gets a lot easier as you go because you can really start copying and pasting a lot of things. Um, so we have our buttons up here. We want to give them a little bit more padding on the top. So let's move them down a little bit more. Let's say padding top is going to be 64 and 64. So it gives it 20 more pixels of space. And then we got our light status bar up there, which is looking pretty good. Now we need to create these email labels down here. So those are pretty simple. We're just going to say, so let's say let email. Actually, guys, I am going to copy and paste these things and just go over it with you to save time because this is getting a little bit long. All right, so 
name label and email label. So here's what it looks like. Same, same process, let, and we don't have to manipulate this ever. Um, so it's not going to change. So it's a constant. That's where we name it. This is where we cast it. Here's where we create our closure and here's where we configure all our attributes, right? So we give it, a, uh, we, we center it uh, for the text alignment. We give it some static text and then we set the font and then we set the text color. And then here we do the exact same thing. It's just, uh, this is a bold system font for the name label. This is a regular system font for uh, the email label. And that's all we need to do to create our uh, name and email guy. And then we're going to go up here and add them. And what we want to do is pin them to the bottom of our profile image view. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. And then we're going to do one more thing. And we'll be done. So we're going to say view.addSubView email label, view.addSubView uh, name label. So actually, we want to do the name label first. And because uh, we're pinning the name label to the bottom first. So we're going to say name label dot anchor. And we're just going to say uh, top is going to be the profile image view dot bottom anchor. So this is a pretty, pretty cool thing to understand here. We're anchoring the top of this name label to the bottom of our profile image view. That's what is going on here. And then uh, we're just going to give it a padding top of, let's say, 12. And uh, then we're just going to center it on our x-axis. So what's pretty cool about that is you can just take this code from the center that we did on the profile image view and just replace profile image view with name label. So that centers it there. And that gives us our name label. So you guys, uh, we don't have to give labels a width and a height. Xcode figures that out automatically for us, which is really nice with labels. Um, so we give it an x-axis anchor, and then we have our y-axis anchor that's on the top side. So if we run this, we're going to see our name label showing up. Then we got to do the same thing for our email label. So there's our name label. It's looking good. The spacing on these guys is looking good as well. Now we just got to do this for our email label. So take this, we're going to center the email label, right? So this is getting pretty simple and pretty quick to do. And then uh, we want to say email label here as well. And we don't want to anchor the email label to the bottom of the profile image. We want to anchor it to the bottom of our name label. So we're just going to go here and say name label dot bottom anchor and change the padding top to four. Run that. And bada bing, bada boom. That's looking good, guys. That's our profile header. The last thing I'm going to show you how to do is uh, how to add targets to these buttons so you can link actions to them the same way you would do in a storyboard. So uh, let's go to these buttons here, right? And we're going to say button add target. And then you're going to select this option. The target is going to be self, which means that the function that is going to handle the action for this button is going to be in this view controller. That's what the self references. And then for the selector, this is the action handler. You type out hashtag selector, and then you just say, you name the function whatever you want. So say handle message user. And then here we want dot touch up inside. So uh, now we need to create this function. So let's go down here, create another mark selectors. And really quick guys, if we look at this, now we notice that we have a section um, up here for each one of our, like we, it fragments and comp compartmentalizes our code very nicely. So we have properties and these are all the properties we have in our, in our, uh, in our class. Here's the life cycle, view to load, and this override method for the status bar. And then here is where our selectors are. And then here we have these extensions. So here we're going to put our handler. You say at objective C func handle message user. And then say print message user here. And then we're going to do the same thing for our follow button. And this is just going to be handle follow user. 
And then we're going to say at objective C honk print follow user here. All right, so now if we go up here, we notice that our selectors are sectioned off as well, so that's looking good. That's just a really good way to organize your code. So when you get your files start to get really large, it's easier for you to find things. So now when we hit this button, we notice in our console that we're getting that print statement handle message user, follow user here, message user here. So that's really gonna be it for this video, guys. And that's really just like scratching the surface and getting used to the fundamentals of what it takes to start creating your views programmatically. I know it's a bit of a learning curve, but like I said, there's a ton of advantages to it. And uh, I hope you guys um, are starting to get comfortable with it. Now, like I said, this is a great tool to have in your toolbox. Uh, kudos to you guys for taking the time to watch this video and starting to get comfortable with something new and stepping out of your comfort zone. That's very, very important to do when you're trying to become a better programmer. You have to do things that you're not used to seeing. Um, if you don't, you're never really going to progress. You get stuck in your own ways and uh, it's just overall not good for you if you want to de continue to develop your skills as a programmer. So uh, give yourselves a pat on the back for trying something new. Even if you guys continue to do storyboards, which you very much can, this is uh, a great tool to be able to have. Um, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe on the channel. And uh, really quickly, I want to show you guys uh, some courses that I have online. Actually, no, I did this in the beginning of the video. Uh, but anyway, do it again. Why, why not? Here's an Instagram clone that I created. The link to uh, this course is in the description um, of this video. Uh, it's just like Instagram. I teach you guys how to do all this stuff. It's super cool. Um, tons of awesome features. It teaches you a lot about how to code. And uh, we engineer a backend from scratch learn how to implement a messaging service, how to follow users. You build a, you build a fully functioning social media and uh, user profile with posts and, and all this cool stuff. So go check that out. Um, if you guys want to check that, it's like $10 on Udemy. So um, make sure you check that out. And uh, thanks guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.